Let's we'll see how y'all do me. <laughs> okay, Stephen. Um, uh, thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, this is a collaborative effort of the Black Business Association, the Second Bank Dollar, Vermont Sauce, and other contributors to have a community forum where we talk about issues, concerns, and resources that affect small and Black businesses in our community. Uh, a person who has been on the forefront and has a finger, what's in our community, is Crystal Mitchell. Crystal? Crystal? Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. Glad to have you again this week. It's been a, a busy week. Uh, last week was uh, a bang of the week. I don't know how many of you participated in the Los Angeles Black Business Expo, so that was pretty awesome. Uh, right now, there's an urban tech connection going on. These young people are got it going on. Uh, but we have some things going on in our community that we all need to talk about. Um, I am the co-director of Recycling Black Dollars. I am the talk show host or the co-host of the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. And this platform, the Community Business Briefing, was created so that we could come together with one voice and also to introduce and to, um, uh, for our our business community to meet those in our in our community that are our leaders that are out there doing things that they may have not have an opportunity to sit at the table with uh, but we do and so we want to make sure everyone understands that right now uh, knowledge is our power and we need to gather all of our collective man brain black power together in order to make a uh, a, a dent and make it a um make a change in our community that is vitally necessary right now, and especially for our young people. So we have a great guest today. He's going to talk about an area that's probably pretty um, important to all of us, the Crenshaw area where major a great deal of us live and, and do business. And uh, so it's really important, I think, that we maintain our presence there. And so uh, Curtis can give us some insight. But today, uh, you know, in, in the world of entrepreneurship, you have to know how to pivot. And so Stephen uh, is a good pivoter, <laughs> and he also brings in some incredible people. So this morning we had a little change, and and as usual, Stephen pivoted, and now we have Kevin Caleb, who is a good friend of mine that I've known for a number of years. I won't say because y'all think that I'm like really 25, but I'm not. But anyway, Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, yes. about two minutes before we uh, bring on our special guests, and then Kevin's going to tell us a little bit about himself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin Caleb. I'm the uh, managing member with Cybin Group. Uh, Cybin Advisors is a collective where we secure your benefits now. I have been working in the community there in um, Los Angeles, Inglewood, and a number of the neighboring cities for the last couple of decades. And I'm just a stakeholder and an advocate. I'm like those guys on the late night uh, attorneys that have that commercial that says, I'll fight for you. <laughs> I'm that guy because uh, it's hard to get things past you when you have the experience of being there when it happened. So having been in the room when it happened, I didn't write the book, but I did see a lot of it. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, what I further do, it's my pleasure to introduce a young man, young, relatively speaking, compared to me that I met several years ago. Uh, matter of fact, we met at San Diego at a commercial real estate conference when he was with uh, C.B. Richard Ellis. And he got a start on the Crenshaw Quarter as a broker. And since then, he's acquired a number of properties in the Crenshaw area as well as surrounding urban centers. Um, he's one of the largest Black-owned uh, real estate owners of the largest Black-owned real estate syndications in the country, one of them. And when we talk about what's going on with Crenshaw Quarter, the LAX, Vermont Slauson, there's probably no one more knowledgeable about that area than someone who has his money and his reputation and his name out there than Curtis Freeland. Without further ado, Curtis. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here um, on this uh, you know, COVID Thursday. Uh, just to give you a little background, um, this is my 30th year in the commercial real estate industry. Um, um, as Stephen stated, I started out as a broker with uh, Fred Sands Commercial, if you remember him, and uh, then went to Stevie Richard Ellis. Spent about 
15 years um, in the in the brokerage world. Uh, didn't really know what I what type of real estate I wanted to get into, except it was commercial. And uh, finally focused my attention on South Los Angeles, uh, Crenshaw specifically, Inglewood, Watts, Compton. Um, <clears throat> met a, a developer out of Canada, believe it or not, who uh, trained me in uh, leasing of uh, shopping centers and told me to focus on a particular area. And I chose South LA. So most of the uh, major shopping centers in our community. Um, I was the leasing broker, uh, you know, for all of Danny Bakewell's properties, um, Watts properties. Um, I had most of them because back in the day, uh, nobody was really interested in our community. Um, whereas I saw it uh, had just so much potential. So I did that for about 15, 12 to 15 years. Then I started my own brokerage, comp my own uh, development company in 2000. Infinity Redevelopment, which is now Sticks Holdings. Uh, we've developed over 25 properties, about six or seven uh, on Crenshaw specifically. Uh, we've bought and sold over a hundred properties. Um, uh, we, we currently are Sticks Holdings, my company. My, I no longer have my partner in Infinity, but right now we're focused still on retail, even though it's a little tough, the retail market even prior to COVID uh, was having some heartache um, and, and COVID hasn't helped, um, but we're still doing ground up development. Um, we're mainly doing it, believe it or not, outside of the Crenshaw district. And I'll tell you why. Um, in fact, our last two developments were in Norwalk and, and Linwood. Um, so the cost of, of, of the land value um, along Crenshaw in our community, which is wonderful, is uh, $200 a foot now. And we specialize in, in, in single level retail. And you just, tenants can't pay the rent uh, to make that type of development work anymore. So with the zone changes, you know, all the tiers uh, on Crenshaw where you know, before you, it was two to one, and now it's like four and a half to one. Uh, most uh, developers are going vertical. Uh, they're doing mixed use projects. Um, they're getting subsidies, federal grants, tax credits, and that's what makes those developments work. Um, it's not our specialty though, uh, to go vertical, except when we're doing office. Um, so um, that's primarily why we're not doing a whole lot of development um, on Crenshaw, but we, we, you know, we have four or five shopping centers that we built ourselves. Um, so anyway, that's what I'm doing now. Um, we own a lot of office buildings. We love office buildings. And I can, you know, tell you about that a little later. Um, COVID has definitely affected that, that, uh, area of commercial real estate also. Um, I am sitting in my, my office now and I'm the only one here. Uh, my staff and, and my four other employees, uh, they basically work from home. Uh, they come in every once in a while, um, but usually I'm by myself and, and you know, my, my building's 45,000 square feet and it's pretty much half vacant these days. And just people coming into the office. Um, so both COVID has had a major effect on, on that. Um, but yeah, there's, even with COVID, even with the retail issues, um, you know, South Los Angeles, Crenshaw District is vibrant uh, with the train coming in. Um, it's an incredible uh, community to invest in. Uh, we just see it going further. And unfortunately with the with gentrification, it's gonna happen sooner than later. And we can already, already see uh, you know, the increased pricing and rents, land value, et cetera. Um, but I, I hope, you know, we own some of it and keep some of it so that we can share in the uh, increase in values. Thank you. Um, so we're going to ask you a couple of questions. So we know how uh, mm, so many of our businesses are going out of business. I think the last uh, a stat that I read was about a, about almost a half a million 
uh, black businesses are going to be closed as a, as a result of COVID. So a lot of those, uh, you know, in Los Angeles, a lot of us are on Crenshaw in the corridor. Uh, so have you seen, what are you seeing from your standpoint, being that you're, uh, you do have property in there? Yeah, well, our, our, our mom and pa tenants, uh, community-based tenants are, are having some difficulties. It's, it's tough, it's, you know, especially when the, the national credit tenants are going out. Um, you know, all your big box users, even prior to COVID though, and that's the thing to understand as far as retail is concerned, um, even prior to COVID, retailers were having a very difficult time. Amazon has just pretty much killed the walk-in store. Um, and we were, we were mainly uh, building uh, uh, food, you know, restaurants, um, but your soft goods, um, your Sears, those type of or stores are, clo are closing um, because you can just order it online. So we had already seen that. COVID has just made it worse um, just because people don't want to travel. Um, I'm actually wasn't a proponent of Amazon until about a year ago. And I can tell you now, you know, every day is Christmas at my house. So, so, so someone's getting, I have seven in my house. So someone, someone's getting a box, you know, um, because we really don't want our kids uh, going out too much. We have five kids and we don't want them going out too much. My wife is real um, um, stickler on that. Um, and I'm the only one really going out much during COVID. So I think I'm a good example of what's happening in, in the community. People just, you know, we, we have a problem out there. We have a pandemic and it's safer to stay home and it is affecting our, our, our community business uh, extraordinarily so. Uh, yes, um, let's talk about, and this has been in the news, uh, what's going on with the Crenshaw Baldwin Hills Plaza. I mean, I, we know it's it's a lot has been happening. I know there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> right, right. And what are your thoughts on what's happening? And, and of course, COVID did not help any of all of this because at least we had them in. We had the vendors in, um, the store owner in, and then all of a sudden they're back out again. So um, how, how, what are your thoughts? And when they do open up, what do we need to do from a community standpoint? Sure. So about three weeks ago, I actually had the opportunity to walk through the mall and it was very, it was very disappointing. I mean, it was just, it was empty. It was quiet and uh, very sad. But what is happening with the mall? The mall, um, <clears throat> the pre-properties, they put the, the pension fund, put the property on the market about six months ago. There was an escrow with uh, Hackman who was going to do studios. Um, that fell through. Uh, then it was an escrow with CIM, and 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 the, the community didn't really like his plan, and uh, the community was able to to terminate that escrow. Uh, uh, the pension fund then went out to the market again. They had a call for offers last week. I think it was last week. Yeah, last week. Um, I don't know the exact number, but there was probably around 10 offers. Um, and, uh, but I, 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 do, I do know people over there, they are reviewing those offers. They, they've selected a couple of, of developers that they think uh, uh, would be a good fit. Uh, but one of the requirements are that whomever the developer is, that they involve a community group as a partner, um, I was involved with one community group and uh, I don't know if they've been selected or not, um, but they are, they are deep in the um, uh, selection phase of the next developer. What they wanna do um, and what I've heard from the community and from the council's office is they, 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 the property has been entitled for office, uh, residential, new retail, um, and it has to be revamped. The, the, and this has nothing to do with COVID or the community, just malls in general. If you don't change, you're dying. Uh, Westside Pavilion, you know, was a successful mall for many years. It's now going to be offices uh, for Google. Um, 
So that's just, you know, and it's happening all over the country. Um, so they're going to have to revamp the, the mall. Some of the buildings are historical, designated historical, so they can't touch those. Um, but like the shopping center to the north with Albertsons, I could see them tearing that all down and, and doing residential there, repositioning the, the, the main uh, retail closer to uh, Crenshaw and, and King. Um, so, I, I mean, I, I'm excited. Uh, I don't know who's, who's been selected. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough deal due to its size, um, due to the historical nature um, of some of the buildings and um, due to the fact that the community is changing Retail is still having issues. COVID is here. Um, you know, the term in my industry now is, was that deal pre-COVID? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it, it makes all this, yeah, it makes all the, yeah, pre-COVID. That's, that's the key word. Um, so whatever they decided to do at the mall pre-COVID might not work post-COVID. Um, and so what that does, it just takes longer to figure things out. In my opinion, um, that's a ten-year deal. Mm. Okay, so it'll be on. It'll be on the table, Kevin. Yes, um, Curtis. I, I'm listening to you, and I'm reminiscing, and I'm thinking of that time back in, uh, I believe it was the late '80s, early '90s, where the Bowen Hill Crenshaw Mall was available for the community to purchase it. Mm -hmm. I believe it was um, back when, I don't have my dates correct, but that was when Tom Bradley was there. I relate to that because we look at a property like the Hawthorne Mall, which has been, other than using for filming, uh, it's been pretty much vacant and empty for two, maybe three decades now. It yeah. could be also redeveloped into senior housing and things of that nature. I'm in Vegas, so I'm not as in touch as I once was. But there is a development that I'd like to ask you about. The Kaiser MLK uh, Medical Center, what do, you, what do you know about what's going on with that? What can you share with us about that development? Um, you mean right down the street here? I mean, it, it, it's built. Are, are they doing more? I don't know if they're doing more. I know, I know um, Fred Leeds uh, owns the balance of it. And mm -hmm. he's been kind of, kind of tight-lipped on what he's proposing. Maybe, you, I mean, you, I, I don't know everything here, but um, I know that he bought it and he's been holding on to it. He's been talking to some uh, retailers like Aldi, but I, Aldi's now going to uh, the Watt development at Exposition and Crenshaw, where the train station is. Okay. So um, I haven't heard of anything else today. Well, I, I heard you say earlier in the developments that you own, manage, and control, that your focus is shifted to office. Um, and with that, um, I think that's, you know, a, a good place to be in. But is there a, a venue that you have that'll make like an, an incubation center for small businesses to be able to to get in that area and, and work because of course, you know, the expenses associated with having an office in that place, cost per square foot, is just gonna price our small businesses out from being in there. Right. In addition to with the enterprise zone and all those things, um, there are benefits to these property owners to help the community. Without a doubt. Without, without a doubt. I mean, I have, I have, I own the Exminster building on uh, Slauson and uh, <clears throat> Overhill, and we we have we have a full floor. We had Providence in there. They left to. They Providence was there for thirty years, and they went down the street and doubled their size. Mm -hmm. um, so we we were actually looking into taking that that second floor and dividing it up into small office spaces. Um, because rents have just gone crazy here. I mean, our 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 rents now are are two fifty a foot. New construction. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, new construction. It's three and four dollars a foot. Um, 
Well, I can recall the Fijian suites that I used to manage on the seventh floor, right in front of City Hall, the two towers there. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Fijian suites there. That was a way for the small businesses to, to start, to have a real address, right. to actually be in business rather than, you know, a hobby. And even with that building, rather, I see that it is sitting probably 75 or 80 percent vacant as well. Yeah. Well, the vacancies. So understand occupancy and vacancy. OK, <laughs> so, so a lot of buildings aren't occupied now because of COVID, but they're not vacant. OK, it's just important to know. So, so my bid, my building here at 3701 Starker, for those who know across from the stables, um, we're right now, I think we're about 50 percent unoccupied, just tenants aren't coming in, but we're a hundred percent leased. Um, so, you know, we're right in the, you know, fourth, fifth month of this pandemic, and we don't know what's going to happen in, in the next six months. If, if, if tenants are just going to finally say, I can't be paying for a space I can't utilize, um, but every time we've had one or two tenants leave, small tenants, the small, the small units get leased up pretty fast and usually by community professionals. Um, and, and so we're always happy to get a small space back uh, because it leases up pretty fast. Yes, thank you. Hey, Curtis, this is Robin Billups. One, I just, I didn't know you, you sure you got your numbers right? You said 30 years. I've been in, in the business for about 40 years, and I'm thinking I've been seeing your name ever since I got into commercial real estate. <laughs> well, I, I didn't come to L.A. until 88, so I got into business. Okay, there you go. That's, le that's legitimate. I came into <laughs> 78. So um, my question to you, um, I've I had a contract working with NAMAC, National Association of Minority Contractors. Okay. Um, they have a lot of small businesses that are members of the organization. I think one of the things that's missing is an opportunity for these folks to have like a WeWorks kind of setup. So when you're looking at repositioning some of these properties, a lot of them need their, their, their back office and their administrative is pathetic, which means then that they really can't qualify for some of the contracts that they, that they, that they technically could qualify for, but administratively they don't have that in place. So I think that that may be something when you guys are looking at repositioning some of this office space, um, I think it's more of a, it's, it's an elevator inc elevated incubator kind of setup where you're offering them administrative support, you have the technical support there, you have um, 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 IT support. You know, again, most folks have historically worked out of the trunk of their car or some van that they have, but when it comes to the administrative part, that right. means then that they can't apply for RFPs. They cannot come to a prime supplier and become a supplier because they're not, they, don't, they don't understand the whole piece about capacity and scalability. And I think that I've been coaching these businesses since 2006. I kinda, I'm still a deal junkie. I still love commercial real estate. I still love crunching numbers. And I got another question for you regarding Inglewood. I've been in here, been in Inglewood for 40 years. Um, but that's one of the things that I think you may want to consider when you're looking at how to reposition some of this office space, especially well, we, we, if people are working have, remotely. Yeah, we actually have looked at that in depth and, mm -hmm. and you raise a great point because is the business aspect. Yes, of, yes. Operation. We're not good at the business aspect of the operation. It. What we've been trying to do is find a master lessor mm -hmm. to who is who does understand the administrative portions that you were talking about. Um, the the technical because I mean we're I mean we're we're just we're just not a we're not a management company that, that well, and, and, and and just think, look at it from this perspective if a small business specializes in taxes and and that kind of stuff like that and they became a tenant you know the tenants in that the, and I'm not talking about having drinks and foods and snacks and all of that I'm just talking about pure office operations, peer right. administrative support. And so if you, if, when you're looking at, if you don't find a master tenant to, 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 to oversee all of that, then you have a project management kind of person working for your company who identifies those individuals to bring those services to that space. And then the tenants that are in that space would actually pay for all of that. Now, I get saying. it, but if you have 30 I'm or 40, the, the, the goal is like in a 6,500 square foot space, 
to put 30 mini tenants in there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. offer a, a, a community conference room, mm -hmm. a reception area, data services, et cetera. It's very time, uh, uh, it, it, it takes a lot of time and uh, you know we work as you as you said they're a major company they do these all the time they're actually having a lot of problems right now because mm -hmm. um, that that model is very expensive to build out um, because you have to have data for each each cubicle um, and just listen we're, we'd love to do it we're looking for someone to do it and uh, we're going to continue to do that because we think it's it's needed Definitely. And that was in, 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 in retracting from that, I'm not saying that it would be your responsibility to host all of that. It's just, I just think that just some kind of pivot towards providing when you're looking at the smaller tenants that you're talking about, and I'm mm -hmm. talking about established businesses, I'm not talking yeah. about startups, you know, that type of thing. Now I want to switch. You talked about um, Crenshaw is $200 a square foot. What is Norwood and Linwood looking at price wise? Wow. So I just bought a piece of land in Linwood two years ago for $35 a foot. And now it's up to 60. And see, I tell people all the time, you want to be, I live in Inglewood. I'm three blocks from Ladera. I've been in this mm -hmm. house 40 years. And I think what people tend not to do is look at the peripheral space in what I call next to the good, so-called good neighborhood. What does good neighborhood mean, right? You know, right. <laughs> but, but my other question to you is, and, and I've been a resident of Inglewood for 40 years living in the same house. Um, I see the stadium and all of these big things that are going on, but I see no addressing of any sort of the commercial quarters in this city. You got any feedback on that? Could you give me some insight? I'm, I, I, here I am with 30 years plus in commercial real estate. I've done affordable housing. I've done tax credit deals. I've done any kind of transaction you can name. I've built in Malibu. So, you know, when I go to talk to them, well, I don't go to talk to the mayor because that's just Robin. Let me be quiet. <laughs> oh. so I'll, I'll give you, um, you, you raise another great point. So let me just say this before I, I give you your answer. Um, I was one of the first leasing agents in Inglewood. Um, mm -hmm. I did like the first 99 cents only store at Crenshaw and mm -hmm. uh, uh, was at Manchester, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and I did most of the major shopping center leasing. So I've been in Inglewood a long time. I know. When they announced the uh, the um, uh, SoFi Stadium, is when I stopped uh, uh, buying properties in Inglewood. It the prices went crazy, um, and and I wasn't I wasn't sold on what that stadium is going to do for the community. Mm -hmm. and I, listen, I hope it does a lot, but I wasn't sold on it. You're but smart. more importantly, and you mentioned this, because I used to go to the Lager games all the time. And the problem was, how do you get there? Manchester is is not a large street. It's, right. you know, it, was, it just took hours. And to your point, I haven't seen the infrastructure change on getting to this SoFi Stadium, I think it's going to, I mean, I know it's off the, the, the new Century Freeway. That wasn't around back then, but still, the streets haven't been widened. Um, they, the train's there, and they're trying to shuttle. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm a little skeptical. And again, I haven't, I haven't bought a property in Inglewood. And, and the last property I had in Inglewood was um, uh, across from McDonald's. Um, I own an office building, used to be a B of A. And that was, you know, maybe 11, 12 years ago. So I, I agree with you. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it, our city is just, I mean, one, the rent on anything, commercial, re residential, is just outrageous. outrageous. Most it's outrageous majority of us can't live i think i heard one time just for for re residential you need to be making like 65 dollars an hour uh at a job <laughs> in order to live in los angeles so we do know that's a big problem uh, one of the things and, and i'm going to uh, jump back to a question that uh, Stephen had uh with the cares act what are there relief um uh relief for those your property owners like yourself and as well as for the tenants that can't pay say like the mall what's going on are you guys getting some sort of compensation I, 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 my biggest concern has been through COVID is 
the drastic effect it's going to have on the economy. I know we talk about the health piece, but the economy is on the backside of that. And with people not in buildings, you, you, you know, small mom and pops not getting rent, what is going to happen post COVID? Hmm. You're asking me? I am. <laughs> I'm very, yeah, I'm very, very nervous about that. Um, I think, uh, I think a lot of our tenants, we initially sent out uh, information regarding the CARES Act and PPP and all this, all the, all the money that was out there to assist them. Um, no telling how long that's going to last in their individual businesses, but I don't see it lasting too much longer because it wasn't that much money. Mm -mm, a lot of them are already expended through it. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, I get the other side, open up, get the businesses going, but you know, they obviously haven't met someone who's died of COVID. Um, I, I, I it, it's, you know, it's unfortunate. I don't have an answer. Uh, we don't have, we're not, put it this way, we're not evicting anybody, okay? Mm -hmm. We ceased uh, with three day notices in March and having, and we've had tenants that are way behind and and we get it. But as long as, you know, we're able to pay our mortgage, we're, we're really not, we're gonna help everybody as much as we can. Um, but listen, in six months, if, you know, half my building is empty, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. I might be going out there looking for work. So exactly. Um, it's a, it's a it's a it's a tough pandemic and you know i really don't have an answer i was over at um Le Mert the other day and that little area over there i i know they have some things that they want to do they want to create an as and i think they're working with the mayor and al fresco uh we're uh, open like marketplace and they're doing co-opting over there uh, it's actually pretty amazing. You can't even park when you go into Lamert now. There's so much activity because yeah. the young millennials and Gen Xs and Ys are just doing their thing. I have some concerns with their uh, 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 being safe, uh, but I do know that there's money flowing over in that space. Uh, you have any comments on what's going on or have you even been over there as of late? I have not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's pretty, um, it's a pretty active uh, space. Um, with all of the, you know, pre-COVID, we were on a projectory, the Crenshaw line, uh, the Crenshaw uh, LA Metro line with project was really the only thing that we were uh, concerned with, right? Now we, we have a, a different mindset. What is, what if anything is Metro, how are they affected by this? And what are they thinking uh, post COVID looks like? Well, they were having problems before. They were supposed to open this year, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now it's, now it's, now it's next year. Um, I think that the train is very important um, for this community um unfortunately i think it's also going to change this community um uh, you know it's, it's going to change gentrification is happening unfortunately um and i i you know as far as the COVID effect on that you know COVID has affected anything you can't have you can't have meetings anymore mm -hmm. you know you, you can't uh, so I'm, I'm sure it has some impact um you know, I've actually been on the train a couple of times, though, just to see the impact. My wife, you know, doesn't like it, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted, I wanted to, to, to check it out. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like being in an airplane. Um, I'm sure it's going to have some impact. Um, it's tight in there. And, um, you know, unless you're wearing masks and social distancing, who knows? Um, but I, <clears throat> we still need it to come to the community. Um, and, and especially for, for, for owners of real estate, which, you know, I've, you know, from the day I started, I, I, I wanted our community to own our land um, because that's where the wealth was and, and you can see what's happening to it. Um, um, but anyway, I lost, sort of lost my train of thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kevin, you have any, other, yeah, it, it, it's a tough one right now. I, I mean, just what does I know for those of us that can operate online, you know, there's so many opportunities for us out there. But for those of you that actually operate in the physical, 
what are you what are some of the opportunities that you're looking at as an investor uh, as a property development what what is pre pre election <laughs> pre right. covid, yeah, -COVID kind of yeah. look like for you in 2021 actually it's probably going to make by 2022 for you Curtis, that was for you, but uh, before you jump on all of that, I will mention that there's a company here called Switch, and they're doing uh, that kind of um, uh, collective that Robin uh, was speaking about. And I agree, for you as the property owner, that's the better way to go, is to get a tenant like that and put them in there and let them do it, because that cost of uh, ramping up is, is rather expensive. Uh, but Crystal's question was actually. Yeah, can you repeat that again, real, real quick, Crystal? You had like. I said, I know it's tough for everyone, what, but what are we looking at for for you as an investor, as a property owner for pro, uh, pre, uh, post uh, COVID? Uh, you guys are pivoting. What are you? What are you guys you know, doing? We, you know, we. You know, right now it's holding on. Okay. The mortgage. We we don't we don't know. We like the office industry. We don't know. We don't know if tenants after uh, after this are are going to want larger space because they have to social distance their employees or mm. they're gonna have smaller space because they're going to have their employees at home. Um, the home model is working um, in, in some industries. Okay. Uh, a lot of people are actually, their companies are, are doing okay with their employees at home. Um, my, my business, I can operate from home, you know, but if I, I can't, showing properties, um, going to the city, the building and safety, if I'm developing a property, you know, it, you really don't want to do that. Okay. So it, it really delays that whole process. Um, you know, I, I don't have an answer. I just, it could go either way. You know, we're, 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 we're trying to figure out, you know, which way it's going to go. Cause we own a lot, a lot of office product. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, we don't, we don't know if they're going to come back, if tenants are going to come back or, or go, or go. And as far as retail, you know, like I said, they were having issues earlier. Um, I think the Amazon effect is, is long-term. I think it's long-term. Um, and I think this COVID time is showing people how much they can actually do from home. And, um, you know, it might, it might help the environment because we're not driving as much. <laughs> <laughs> it's not helping businesses who need walk-in traffic or, you know, pedestrian traffic. Exactly. Um, Greg uh, Sneed indicated we need like a WeWork, a Black version of a WeWork, although they're all shut down as well. But I assume, Greg, you're talking post. Post. But that would be that collective because uh, WeWork's work has worked like that. And I know they've been in the West Side, but I do know they had even start closing some of their offices or some of their properties. Well, they're, they're closing their office on the West Side, but we've had companies look at like our building to buy it and, and rework it like that. Um, and, you know, we're still, you know, we're still, there's like, I believe there's like 17 office buildings over four stories in our community. So there's not a lot. Mm. The office market, um, you know, you, the, the only office building that's been built in the last 10 years is Kaiser. Okay? Right. Okay. So, and, you know, I've owned this building 3701 since 05. And in 07, we were 40% vacant. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so we've come a long way. Now we're 100% lease, but we've never been 100% lease before. And I'm just, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that people were going to buy the mall and do all offices, but they were going to try to bring in tech companies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're trying to figure out is, is, is there enough demand for office space in this community right now for new office buildings or are we work? The guys that I look talk to in Orange County that they have two buildings that are like we work like, they looked at this one about two years ago. They were going to buy it from me and do that, and they passed. Um, I think we're going to get there. I don't know if we're there yet, um, but the other problem 
with office now is that to build it, you got to go subterranean and you need four or $5 rents to make it work. Mm. And who can pay that right now? Right, exactly, exactly. Uh, Greg Sneed, you have a question? Gregory? I asked it already through you, the, the uh, WeWork. That was oh, it. okay, that was your question. Well, yeah, I question. Okay. Uh, Curtis, I know that you're the real estate syndication gang. What, realistically, what are the size of deal for a small real estate investor in a syndication? How can we participate? Is that a realistic option? It's definitely a realistic option. The, the, the gentleman who, who, who washes my car owns 1% of my Linwood development. Oh. Okay. He came to me and says, I want to get in the game. Um, we got 25,000. Can you help me? I'm like, yeah, you're in. You're in. And um, hopefully when that development, we're building a 7-Eleven gas station. Um, hopefully when that development is done and, and closed, he'll make substantial money. I urge everybody to get into real estate any way you can. Um, we syndicate. Um, uh, most of my deals, we, we syndicate about 20 or 30% of the deal to equity partners. Um, again, I guess gave an example of 25. Most of my investors will put in, you know, anywhere from 50 to half a million dollars. Um, but if they're, if they're in the community or they look like me, we, we get them, we get them in the, we get them in the deal. Because uh, that's that's important to to share share the wealth, but also share share the experience. Um, because I've said for many years, and I've been in this community thirty years now. I wish we would have bought more and owned more, because it's going crazy now, and it's gonna, you know, I was with some 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 guys in Century City that don't live here, and they were they were calling this the new Culver City. This yeah. area, the new Culver City. I had never heard that before. Because <laughs> Culver City is getting five, six dollar rents, you know. Um, <clears throat> so um, it's it's real important. Uh, yes, we syndicate. We'd love to talk to you about getting into our developments, but even, it's not even us. If you if you want to just go buy a you know a small one bedroom house somewhere, buy it because real estate only goes up. It goes down, but it's always just going up. And I think it's the safest investment in the world. My brother's with Fidelity Investments in North Carolina. I told him just yesterday, that's just legal gambling, man. You need to get in real estate. <laughs> that was just yesterday. So. And actually, you make a good point there. My brother-in-law is retiring, and so they have significant. He's been at UCLA for a number of years, so he's been looking for some way to get into real estate, commercial real estate on that side, not knowing that there were syndicated opportunities out there. Uh, so um, if someone was interested, and there are a number of individuals right now because of COVID, their companies are now giving them an out. Um, you know, giving them a package to leave out. So being able to take their money because uh, the stock market is all up and down, especially up leading up into this election. I know my stock has been doing all kinds of crazy stuff this week. I just had to stop looking at it because it's kind of scary. But, um, but I think that's a great idea for those that are getting ready to retire or been offered a package and now they got to decide what to do with their pensions and if they can take some money out and reinvest it in there. And everyone's all about the community right now or about, you know, oh, yeah. in, increasing. Let's focus on us. Yeah. So on us. So um, if, 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 if someone and he is interested, can I give him your contact information? Yeah, I'd be, yeah, I'd be happy to talk to them. I, yeah, the more the merrier. Um, you know, we have a lot of development, so, you know, we, we, we don't mind sharing, sharing the, I mean, there's risk too. I don't want everybody. To right. Think. Exactly. It's not well, um, anything that you're investing. Yeah, and also understand, you know, and, and when we syndicating development deals, um, it usually takes two to three years. Right. Um, however, you know, we, we're averaging around a 35% annual return. So, oh. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I that helps. <laughs> yeah, that helps. That helps. I will definitely uh, pass that on. Yeah, but th and that helps you. It helps them. It, 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 and I think that's where we as a people need to be. We need to be looking at, I, I don't know if you know Dr. Rosie or those of you do, she's always talking about Black folks piecing up. 
So, so I think that's where we are. Um, Marva Smith has a question. She wants to know if you have any insight on the cultural center that's being developed in the Crenshaw Corridor in Lamert Park. And I know- I do not. Do not, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I don't- The cultural center, they just painted white. And I don't know what they're doing with it. I'm so upset. Does anybody <laughs> know what's happening with Mavericks? Uh, no, I heard somebody was trying trying to get somebody to buy it. Marvin, you got some insight? Um, I just stopped in, wait, let me see this. I stopped and um, talked to um, the guy who's working on construction there and a woman, um, I couldn't figure out whether she leased it or, or bought it, but uh, it's going to be a, a private club. Mm. Really? Yeah. So you're going back to the club business, okay. Yep. I know the former owner of the Maverick Flats. I know, and I said, well, you know, I think they tried a private club before and whatever. And I was like, well, how much is it? Because, you know, I won't be in there if it's too much. But, you know, anyway, so that's what I heard. That was just from the construction folk. Okay. All right. Interesting. I did walk over and ask. Okay, thanks. I've been, I've been, I've been trying to figure it out. You know the guy. I'm blanking on his name right now. But you know the guy who's over there. I'll find it. He gave me a card. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's kind of what, I, and I had heard that the, the current owner was looking for somebody to rent it out, uh, lease it out, and run a club there. I think that's the last thing I heard was, was a couple months ago, or that was pre-COVID though, because uh, we, 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 you know, we, we can't even have live events, so I don't even know why, when right. we do that. Right. <laughs> Yeah, indoor club, perfect. perfect <laughs> no, they'd have to be on that outside patio that you created, and then have cubicles. <laughs> so they Listen, that patio it. didn't help me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any other questions that anyone asked? Yeah, it's sad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I spoke to to Gwen John Daniels' uh, wife just the other day. I was just, you know, just I was telling her, I'm sorry it didn't work. I really wanted Mavericks to to do well and bring it back. And anyway, I love the upstairs. I thought you did a fantastic job. <laughs> I Nobody enjoy like going there spirit. myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> you know, I loved it. You know, I know Mar was there. Mar was there. <laughs> because you know that's that part of the the culture of of the Crenshaw Corridor. We 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 are here because there's a culture and there's history here, and it's where when you come out your door, you look around and the people look like you, and that's a good feeling. <laughs> yes, that's yes. a real good feeling. We want it to continue. To, to continue. Well, I'm, I'm particularly interested because my client uh, is relocating in the Crenshaw. Um, corridor Lamert Park and there are a number of discussions um, about the theater space, the Roby Theater Company, um, which is founded by Danny Glover and Ben Guillory, presently housed at LATC the Theater. So we've been having lots of conversations, including the vision, the factions that are looking at the mall, um, you know, Marquise and Herb. So anyway, yeah, I think uh, Lamert seems to be operating in its own in a, in a small little entirety of its own. I, I think right. you probably should jump on over there, and there's some some people that are spoke. I'm in Lamert Park, you're in Lamert. Oh, okay, Lamert. okay. Yeah, I just we're in all the conversations. Okay, um, Curtis, I did want to talk to you about some advice on the property stuff that I got. Um, so I sent you my in private my my contact number. Okay, and I will contact you. Thank you. So we're about, we got a few more minutes. Uh, there's some couple of updates. I believe that uh, there's another round of the PPP. Uh, uh, no, is it the IDO or the LISA? Wh which one is it, Stephen? That um, money's available. Oh, okay. You can't. Yeah. Still on mute. I don't have that right now. The information is preliminary. Wouldn't want to release it yet. Oh, okay. All right. So we have that. I have a workshop. There's a number of us that are still trying to figure out how we're going to do business. So I have a workshop coming up September 30th on reinventing your business model. Uh, for those of us that are consultants and, 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 and business coaches, uh, online uh, courses is going to be an amazing way for you to do business. I can't tell you how many summits that I have attended that have some nice little price tickets to them and they're doing well. 
Uh, there's an urban tech one going on right now, uh, and and it's it, I was very impressed. In fact, uh, Janice uh, Brian um, Harwood, she was on yesterday. I haven't seen her in a long time. So we really need to think about that. Um, and, and the Black Business Expo, it had some challenges, but I think it was overall pretty successful and everybody was pretty excited about it. But, you know, again, we need to get to a place where how are we creating revenue? But then most importantly, how are we working together uh, Kevin, you want to tell them uh, your project ready to be exposed to the world? Well, um, yes and no. There are far too many moving parts on on this uh, project to try to explain, but we're in the benefits industry. We're helping people do a number of things, reduce their out-of-pocket costs on their uh, medical related expenses. We're helping to bring tax savings to the employer, as well as impacting retirement funds by showing how these benefits can be applied to, um, in effect, uh, help turn the Social Security around. But again, uh, it's too much to go into on, th on this uh, short, uh, uh, brief, kind of description suffice to say i'm in the business i've always been in i'm in the i help people business and what i'm doing right now is i'm helping people secure their benefits now and in doing so we discover a number of things like asset protection and and things like um the cost of real estate being what it is well doggone it grandma bought the house for seventeen thousand in 1970 it's worth $475,000 today. It's on 112th and Broadway. Who lives there? Who controls that property in your family? Those are the kind of issues that we want to uh, talk about and get people thinking about because the legacy that you leave behind will definitely be tied to the real estate owned in the family. Period. I'll get off my soapbox. Now that's a good box to be on now. Yeah, good box. Definitely good box. Um, Robert, there, I'm sorry, go ahead. There's a question on, um, and I guess this might be a more of a question. Who, do you know who owns Lamert Park or the property in Lamert Park? Anyone know that? Somebody asked that question. Which property? Which one? There's a, it's a parking lot owned by the city. Who, okay. Who? I know there's an artist over there that owns some of the properties that are there. Uh, that that was, but that was pre-COVID. So who knows what's going on now? Rafford owns that. Okay. Who owns the vision? What was the Vision Theater? The city doesn't. The city, but they're they're getting a private contractor. Yeah. Uh, according to James, the other day, um, that they're bringing in a private contractor. That's all I know. Okay. Um, know that you know. Uh, Fred owns that whole side where. Uh, right. And then we have the other owners in between. Okay. And Community Bill, which I helped found, owns the corner. Okay. All righty. Community Bill. Good. Fantastic. Um, so it's uh, 11.56. Uh, the couple of things that should be on our mind is, one, if you haven't completed the census, please go over and do that. And two, November 3rd, we're on a countdown. I, I don't, I haven't had my countdown clock. If you tune in tomorrow to the business owner, I have my countdown clock. But voting is vitally important. Prop 16 is vitally important. Prop 22 is vitally important. Um, making sure that we're voting the right um, uh, politicians in our community. We're in a critical turning point right now. It is so important that they're on the same plate, on the same page with us. Uh, so vote, 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 vote. Make sure everybody vote. Check to make sure that you are registered because there's all kinds of shenanigans going on. Curtis, we want to thank you so much for your insight and however we can help you uh, and, and help at the same time helping ourselves. Let's please just join our voices. Robin, as always, uh, your insight and your and your expertise in our community. Marva, thank you for showing up, uh, coming over and talking to us. Uh, confusing Robin a little bit. She thought she had a visitor from the past. <laughs> 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 and Kevin, thank you so much for co-hosting today. And Stephen, as always, yes. 
I'm responding to the wrong private message, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't see it. Here, I'm gonna put my number in the in the general. Oh, thank you very much. Um and and Mara, we love to have you on the business zone. Uh, uh, Greg Sneed, happy birthday. If we don't talk to you before Saturday, happy birthday. <laughs> Enjoy, my brother, in, in the safety of your home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. So, so if anybody, you put your information in the chat, I will be sending out the this, this recording uh, as well. And, my, and my phone number, Steve. Oh, he, oh, you want to put your phone number in there for, for Curtis, uh, Stephen. And as well, um, uh, so tune into the Business Zone with Crystal and Gilbert. We're doing a topic on why entrepreneurs suck at follow-up. So that should be an interesting conversation. <laughs> so you want to, we want you to chat them tomorrow afternoon live on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, but please put your information on. If you got my blast, the, the conversation we had last week with Marisha Barandin is there. What a powerful, I've been, I've been addressing conversations all week long on what that young lady had to say about black banks and the wealth divide and, and also uh, Robin's uh, input. It was phenomenal. Um, so we need to stay in those veins. So we want to be fired up. You got you got everybody was fired up last week. Let, trust me, uh, my phone never stopped ringing last week, <laughs> and, and after I bo uh, boosted it. But here's the interesting thing: we got one minute. I boosted that show on on Facebook, like I do all my shows, and it was rejected. That I had to come back and take the color, the word black, out of the title in order for them to in order for them to boost it. And so it went up yesterday, but long as I said the color of money and black bank, they rejected me boosting that on Facebook, just so y'all know. <laughs> That's good to know. When I came back and I took the word black out, then it went up, but no problem. Same picture, same video, same everything. Only thing I changed was the title. That's amazing, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> All right, guys, so thank you so much. I um for uh coming out pass this on uh this information on share it with your friends we don't need to keep everything to ourselves we need to share with our community because that's the only way we're going to come we're going to we're going to move forward is to make sure we're operating in a united voice so have a great weekend uh be safe vote and somebody's coming in vote and also complete the census information so thank you guys you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, I'm Lee. How Bye. are you? Good to see you.